I'm Brigham Larson with Brigham Larson Pianos. This is an awesome piano. This is this is uh, um, a uh, six and a half foot Highland 198. It it actually was my my very first piano that uh, when when I started out in a in a commercial location. I've been I've been working on pianos for 25 years, but I've only had an actual like bricks and mortar commercial location for about 10 years, and and it was kind of scary. Like, okay, I, I need some bigger pianos. Um, what what pianos am I going to get? Because most most pianos, grand pianos anyway, that I had had um, in my first commercial location were like baby grands and six foot and under. Um, and this this was the piano that uh, ten years ago, that uh, or the model. This not not this exact piano, but uh, this is the model of piano that I that I settled on because I felt like it was so good and so so reasonably priced um, that uh, this is the one that I landed on. And, uh, and I've been really happy with it ever since. I've, I've promoted it very enthusiastically, um, and, and this, this model is, is now um, all, over, all over here in, in Utah County and, and Salt Lake. Um, so, uh, what, what I would say, and this is after 10 years, by the way, of, of having worked on it, having sold them, having seen them in people's homes, I'm, I'm, even though I have this bricks and mortar location, I'm still, servicing at least one piano a day in the morning and then I come into the shop after. Um, I, so I still service uh, pianos in people's homes and I, and I, see, I see these 198s and they're awesome. Uh, I, I, don't, uh, I don't back down from, from the, the claims and promises that I've made over the last 10 years. In fact, I would say I would double down on them and say this, this is just an absolutely awesome piano at a super, super affordable price. Um, so that's that's uh, that's what I would say. I'll, I'll get into I'll I'll get into um, playing the piano itself here in here in just a second. But uh, the, the reason that I think people people really fall in love with this piano, I would say, is because it's such a good cross section. It frankly seems too good to be true. It, it's such a good cross or, or uh, intersection is, is what I'm looking for. An intersection of quality and price. Um, I think a lot of times, especially in this market, where or this industry, I guess, where where there are pianos that you can get for sixty, eighty, a hundred thousand, even one hundred and fifty thousand, even higher than that. Over there are some pianos that are three hundred thousand dollars, and so and so the implication I think is okay if a piano is say a hundred thousand dollars that it's going to be, you know, five times better than a piano that's twenty thousand dollars. Um, but it's just not the case. Like it's not the case. And, and in many in many instances, a piano like this that's super affordable um, is actually just as good as as pianos that are that are like you know forty, sixty, eighty, or or a hundred thousand dollars. And I, I realize that's a that's an insane claim to make, but uh, there you go. That's that's the claim that I'm that I'm making. Um, so, it, it, like I said a minute ago, it probably sounds too good to be true. Um, in which case, for the most part, when something sounds like it, it probably is. But here's here's how they've done it. Um, all of the all, all of the design work is is done by uh, well. W w what they've done is they've essentially married what the East does best with what the West does best. Namely, the, uh, the West, there's a, there's a group of four designers that, that this company, um, that works for this company. This one is a, is a guy named Frank Emerson. I actually know him personally. He worked for Baldwin, um, I believe since the 60s or 70s. He's, he's actually now retired, um, but uh, he worked as their head designer. For, for a long, long time, and then and he and he's well known in in piano industry design um, circles. And uh, anyway, he's he's an awesome guy, and he designs awesome pianos. So what I mean by design is, um, I'm I'm actually really referring to the instrument. I'm talking I'm not talking about the the cosmetics or the cabinetry. I'm referring to let's come come up and have a look. I'm referring to like the the scaling of the of the uh, the string. So like like how long each string, um, how long the speaking length of each string, how long the tail is, where on the soundboard 
the each each note falls uh, the, the bridge falls on the soundboard and and they're back in the um, in the bass bridge as well so so dimensions the type of the type of soundboard that is to be used the the design of the plate the design of the bridges the design of the action all of the the pin block determining the materials that are going to be used all of that is done by is done by western people so that's and that's what the west does best um, however, where the West falls short, and this is frankly why you have pianos that are $100,000, is they don't manufacture efficiently. So like, if you're manufacturing a piano in New York, where you have um, labor unions and you have, um, your, you have a building that's in the middle of New York City, and um, all of the, I, I guess, accompanying things that go along with, with manufacturing, there, uh, it's not very efficient, frankly. Frankly, I've been to this factory uh, twice now, once in 2013, when, once in 2018, and when I go there, it is astounding the efficiency. That's what the East brings to the table: is manufacturing efficiency, and and because of that, because things are so incredibly, astoundingly efficient. In fact, I would I would refer you if you're interested. I've done a series of videos. On, on my factory visits. It's incredible to watch, like, for example, rather than, rather than some guy in an apron, in a leather apron, going through and, and one by one chiseling out all the notches on the bridges, they have a machine that just, that, just, that just does all the work and it's so fast, it's so precise. I mean, some, that, that's something that I should mention. Some piano companies, they, they like, they highlight the fact that it's done by some old German guy in a leather apron. Like, yeah, there's kind of some cool factor to that. But precision, you can't beat a CNC machine. Even, I mean, even an old German guy in a leather apron can't beat a CNC machine. And like all these bridge pins, for example, there, I, I remember, you know, just, just thinking off the top of my head, uh, a, a video that I did of a machine that, that goes through and inserts all of the bridge pins and it just, it's, it's like a pneumatic driven and it's just shooting all these bridge pins in. Go check out the video. It's really cool to watch. Anyway, so what that means, what manufacturing efficiency means is that these things can be produced by the thousands for like crazy inexpensive. Um, anyway, and then, um, and then quality control. The, the company that distributes these pianos in the United States they have somebody there that that um, that is over quality control at every at every step. So they are a essentially a representative, a Western representative, ensuring that everything is is done according to according to specs. Um, and uh, what I've personally seen over the last um, ten years that I've that I've been selling high moons um, is that is that those um, those quality control people are very very effective. So, so I have complete confidence that when, the, when any of these Highlands come, come in through my door, in a box, all wrapped up, when I unbox that and look inside, I know with complete confidence that, that everything is going to be done appropriately, correctly, properly, with, with the materials that are prescribed, with, with the, the, um, the craftsmanship uh, dimensions, everything as, as, um, as is as I've grown accustomed to with this with this high quality instrument. Okay, so this is um, let's let's listen to it. Um, six and a half foot. It's a really nice, pleasing, powerful, nice, powerful sound. I would say tonally, it's it's probably middle of the road. Like it's not it's not too dark, it's not too bright. Some pianos have a reputation for one or the other. This one, um, I, I I wouldn't say it falls on you know heavily on one side or the other.
Okay, so, so to describe um, what, what I'm hearing and feeling as I, as I play, this, uh, play this piano, as I realize you probably can't get the full experience just watching, um, watching a video, I feel like uh, it's responding to my every nuance. Like I can, I can play a, play a note just, you know, extremely quietly and still get a sound, which, um, which you don't get. That's a really important thing to, to check out. Um, it's, uh, tonally, like I was saying, kind of overall middle of the road, but that said, and this is, this is something important that, that you don't see on entry level pianos is that when you play more pianissimo, it has a warmer sound. And as you get louder and louder, it gets brighter and brighter as you get louder and louder. Um, so, so you should be able to, for example, this is something that piano technicians talk about when, when voicing a piano, is what, what you're looking for is, is you want to, um, as you're voicing it, uh, start, start, with, start with a very pianissimo, like triple pianissimo, uh, blow on the on the note and you should hear a very warm sound and break it into 10 10 try to be as equal as you can um, equal louder and louder harder and harder and harder and then you should hear that note get blossom without without distorting you should you should hear it get brighter and brighter and, and, and blossom into into that bigger um, more more projection which, which this one definitely has, for sure. Um, I hear a nice, I hear, I hear great voicing, um, I hear great projection, I feel like um, here at the piano that, it, uh, that it, just, it just feels great, it sounds great, and while at the same time, people that are, that are elsewhere, and I guess, um, and um, that, that, that's something that, that a lot of people aren't aware of. Some, sometimes, sometimes a piano can, um, can sound great to the pianist, but it doesn't sound good to people that are listening. Sometimes, um, and, I, and, I, and there's some, there some infamous, infamous um, examples of this, sometimes a piano sounds, um, sounds great to the, the people that are listening, but not to the pianist. But, but a really good piano sounds great to both, and, and this one's definitely in that category. So. Uh, what else can I say about it? It's, it's just an awesome piano. I don't think you will possibly, I would challenge you, to find a piano that is this good for a better price. It has a 15 year warranty. Um, the, the finish, finish is, is super hard, super durable. Um, not, I haven't had issues there in the 10 years. Oh, one, one final thing is this, is this lid. This is the, um, the, slow fall slow fall lid that's kind of a kind of a nice i guess mainly it's a safety feature but it also um had doubles as the just make it make it super easy to to lift up lift up the lid as opposed to you know having to struggle to, to lift it up because it's basically already there and then of course the the slow fall um fall board as well so anyway highland 198 awesome piano Awesome price. Um, I challenge you to find something better. The, the address here is 1497 South State Street in Orem, Utah. The, the phone number is 801-701-0113. Thanks for watching.